So what is the structure of the atom? Atom composed from two regions, the cloud of electrons and nucleus. Elec the cloud of electrons composed from electrons, insulated electrons, and nucleus composed from protons and neutrons, Com protons and neutrons, protons and neutrons, protons with positive charge, neutrons with no charge, and electrons with negative charge. What is the mass of the atom? What is the mass of the atom? First, what is the volume of the atom? Most of the volume of the atom in the cloud of electrons. Most of the volume of the atom in the cloud of electrons. And you can find the electrons anywhere in, the, in this cloud. It can be uh, besides the nucleus or away from the nucleus. If it's besides the nucleus, the electrons here, it will be with low energy. If it's away from the nucleus, means it's with high energy. Mass of the atom, the mass of the atom because of its nucleus. All of the mass of the atom because of its nucleus. Here, most of the mass because of its nucleus. Electron, the mass of the proton, the mass of the proton equal, if you have a mass of one proton, equals the mass of 2,000 electrons. 2,000 electrons. So the electrons is very, very small. So it's, um, it's uh, almost with no mass. Electrons with no mass. Okay? All of the mass is inside protons and neutrons. So what's the, uh, the unit for mass for the atom? For the atom, because it's very, very, very small, not like uh, any other objects, so they make a special, a special unit for the atom called atomic mass unit, called atomic mass unit. And if we say that uh, the one proton equals, the mass of one proton or neutron equal one atomic mass unit, means uh, the mass of the electron will be one out of 2,000 atomic mass units. So the unit for the mass for the atom called atomic mass unit. It's special for the atom because it's very small. And electrons almost with no mass. Electrons almost with no mass. I said for you there is many terms very important to know in this chapter. The first one, atomic number. First one, atomic number. What's the meaning of atomic number? The number of protons or the number of electrons. The number of uh, protons equals the number of electrons. And they said for you, atomic number, it's like your fingerprint. For each element, never you will find two elements with the same atomic number. So atomic number, it's like a fingerprint. You can identify the element with its atomic number. So atomic number is the number of protons and in the same time, the number of electrons. For example, hydrogen, one proton or one atomic number. So never you will find another another element with one atomic number. Here, helium was two atomic number, means two protons or two electrons. Isotopes, what's the meaning of isotopes? Atoms with the same number of protons and different number of neutrons. Same number of protons and different number of neutrons. It's like copies or versions, different versions of the atom. With the same number of protons, it means the same atomic number, but different number of neutrons. Like here, carbon atom with one, six, um, six protons and six neutrons. Here, another carbon atom with six protons but seven neutrons. Another isotope, six protons and eight neutrons. And of course, all of them with different mass number. What the meaning of mass number? The number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Here, 12, here, 13, here, 14. So here, 12. Here, 13, here, 14. Why they have different mass number? Because they have different number of neutrons. What the meaning of mass number? The number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So here, carbon, one carbon isotope with 12 mass number. Another one with 13 mass number. Another one with 14 mass number. Why? Because the number of pro uh, neutrons different each time. Here you have carbon, two isotopes, two isotopes. What's the meaning of isotope? Here, carbon atom with the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. So different mass number. Here, another isotope of the, of the carbon with the same number of protons. Six here, a same number of protons, but different number of, of neutrons. So different mass number. Mariam Ahmed, can you stop playing, please? Okay, girls, so here, 
isotope means different versions of the atom with the same number of protons and different number of neutrons. And if you have atoms with different number of neutrons, so you have different number of mass number, different mass number. Why? Because mass number means the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So if the number of neutrons is different, so the mass number will be different. Why scientists made a models for atom? I said for you, why scientists made a models for any object? If it's too small, too large, too different, too uh, far away, so they cannot like the solar system. Why they make models for the solar system? To be easy to study it. You can go to the solar system, to the sun, to the planets to study it. Each one want to, uh, wants to study the solar system will go there. Of course not. We'll make a model for the atom to be easy to study because it's far away. So the same as the atom. Atom is very small. So make model for the atom or models for the atom to be easy to study like different models till the, the next one or the last one. Okay, then the elements in the periodic table. Now we have a periodic table, a new periodic table and all the elements arranged in the periodic table in order of increasing of atomic number. Long ago, elements not organized in a table, but there was a scientist called Mendeleev. Mendeleev discovered a set of patterns that applied to all the elements. Make something like, make something like a game. Bring cards, put each, uh, uh, write a name and the sample of each, chemical sample of each uh, uh, element and try to put the, uh, the similar compounds or similar, sorry, elements with each other, similar in what, in the physical and chemical properties similar in the physical and chemical properties. And he found a similarities between uh, some elements in physical and chemical properties. Like what I said for you before, it's not important. Chlorine and fluorine gases that irritate the lungs, uh, copper and silver tarnish if exposed to air. So put all of the uh, elements with the same similarities like, um, like uh, chemical and physical properties with each other. And then he arranged all the elements there, there were about 63 elements, arranged all of them in a old periodic table and old periodic table, all the, uh, the elements arranged in order of increasing atomic mass, atomic mass, a new term, atomic mass, what the meaning of atomic mass, the average mass of all isotopes average mass of all isotopes. This is called atomic mass. So all the time you will find the uh, atomic mass average. Why? Because it's average mass of all isotopes. Average mass of all isotopes. So if you look here, you will find atomic mass. What the meaning of atomic mass? We have many isotopes for, e for each element. So average mass of, for all of them, this is called atomic mass, the average mass of all isotopes. So long ago, Mendeleev, discovered that or made a pattern that all of the elements can apply on it. In a periodic table, organized all the elements in a periodic table, all periodic table, and this called, and according to what, in order of increasing atomic mass, atomic mass, atomic mass, and now by atomic number. Okay, here, this is the old periodic table. And he discovered that uh, there is a three, uh, three blanks or empty spaces, and he predicted that uh, it will be a new, uh, a new discovery about elements. And then the scientists, after a while, discovered the three elements. But here is a new periodic table. What is the difference between the old and the new periodic table? First, the number of the elements. Long ago, there were only 63. Now we have about more than 100 elements. Long ago, arranged the old periodic table, are the elements arranged in increasing, in order of increasing atomic mass, atomic mass. Now, increasing of atomic number. So long ago, atomic mass, now increasing in the atomic number. How you can find any data about the elements in the periodic table? I will give you the periodic table like this one. And they will say for you, please find any information that you know about, for example, helium, helium here. How do you know the, the uh, properties of the helium? How do you know um, it's simple, it's no name, um, atomic mass? All this you can find it in the block or the square of the periodic table. 
If you find in the if you find any element in the periodic table, you will find the element in a square. This is square or this block gives you four important information. Four important information. The first one, atomic number. And I said for you, it's a very, very, very important. Why? It's like the fingerprint for the element. Iron, iron, Fe. This is a chemical symbol, chemical symbol. And the name, the scientific name, it's iron. And this average number, it's atomic mass. So what are the four main information that you will know from the, about the element in the periodic table? Atomic number, chemical symbol, element name, iron, atomic mass, the average mass of all isotopes. So this is the main information that you will know from the, uh, the block in the periodic table or the uh, square in the periodic table. What is the chemical sample? It's the first letter or two letters of the name in English or Latin. Now the, uh, the new discovered uh, elements, it can be in English, like carbon, C, like calcium, Ca, like helium, He. But long ago, the old elements in Latin, in Latin, like what? Like uh, a gold, Au, Orium, the first two letters, abbreviation, the first two letters of the name in Latin. Orium here, like potassium, K, like calcium, calcium, the name in Latin language. Okay, so we have in the chemical simple is the first letter or two letters of the name in English or in Latin. In English or Latin, the organization of the periodic table, you know, now it's of course organized in or in increasing of the from left to right, increasing in the atomic number. So you is we start from one. Two here, hydrogen here, helium. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, increasing in the atomic number. You will find that we have about 18 columns, 18 columns called group or family. Group or family. 18 columns called group or family. How many rows? Seven rows. And the row in the periodic table called period. The, low, the row in the periodic table called period. The elements here, this is uh, these elements I said for you that uh, push down these two rows, push down, but not a new new uh, rows. It's only seven rows, but push down to make them compact or not too wide. So we have how many columns? Eighteen columns. How many rows? Seven rows. But why the column in the periodic table called family or group? Because the elements in the same column share the same characteristic with each other, that share the same properties with each other. But in the row, the same teacher? No, in the row, different completely from each other. So here, for example, row, uh, row the fourth row, starts with potassium, calcium, very reactive metals. And now you've, you understood what the meaning of reactive metals, very reactive metals. Then less reactive metals, less reactive metals, and then Metalloids, metalloids here, look at the pointer. Metalloids, then non metals, then nobel gases that are unreactive at all. So, in the same row, they are different completely from each other. They are different completely from each other. But in the same column, family, group wise, they share the same characteristic like nobel gases, all of them unreactive. All of them unreactive. So, in the same column, they are very similar to each other in the properties and in the same row, different completely from each other. Then I will give you unknown, unknown object and I will say for you, this object, metal or non-metal, teacher, how I know? You will know from the properties, physical and the chemical properties. If you know the physical and the chemical properties of metals and non-metals, of course you will know what is the object that you have. Okay, what are the physical properties of metal? Metal, malleable. Malleable, what the meaning of malleable? Malleable means you can use hammer to make shapes. You can use hammer to make very flexible. Hard, but in the same time, flexible. So you can use hammer to make shapes. Ductile, make wires. Ductile, make wires. So look here, you can use hammer to make shapes or make uh, into uh, uh, make sheets or Ductile means make wires, make wires. 
conductivity, very good conductors for heat and electricity. Metals, very good conductors for heat and electricity. So we can make wires from metals to conduct electricity. Here we use wires from copper to conduct electricity. Magnetic, what the meaning of magnetic? Can make magnets or attract it to the magnet. Can make magnets or attract it to the magnet. Like here, use a magnet to attract metals. Use magnets to attract metals. Solid at room temperature, most of them. Solid at room temperature, except for mercury, liquid at room temperature. So what are the main properties of metals? Malleable, ductile, good conductors for, uh, for heat and electricity, magnetic, solid at room temperature. Solid at room temperature except for mercury. What are the chemical properties of metal? First, reactivity. Reactivity means react with other elements by a very easy way. This is called reactivity. And if it's not by easy way, it means it's less reactive, yes? So the activity react with other metals or compounds by easy way. Like what? Sodium, very reactive. So whenever you will find sodium and uh, you know in the next, uh, in the next lesson, uh, you know that sodium is very, very reactive, very reactive. Never you will find sodium uncombined in nature. So to, uh, to store sodium, you should put under oil in the sealed container, in a sealed container. Gold, unreactive, so it's valued. Why it's valued? Because it's unreactive. You can use the gold anywhere, yes? And iron, it's uh, in between in the reactivity, in between sodium and gold. So reactivity means the reaction between the elements, the metal and other elements by easy way. Here, iron is that react with oxygen to form rust. But you can use this rusted iron again. No, now it's uh, yes. Now it's kind of corrosion. What's the meaning of corrosion? The destruction of metal. Destruction of metal. You can use it again. Hard to use it again. Now it's destructed, so it's uh, it's hard to use it again. This is called corrosion. This is called corrosion. What's the meaning of corrosion? Destruction of metal. What's the meaning of corrosion, destruction of metals? Okay, metals in the periodic table, where in the periodic table? Anywhere? No, in the left side of the periodic table. Metals in the left side in the periodic table. And it's groups, okay? The first group called alkali metals. The first group called alkali metals, except for hydrogen. The first group called what? Alkali metals, alkali metals. Okay, all the elements in this group, very reactive, very reactive. And react with other elements by losing one electron. Group one by losing one electron. Again, group one by losing one electron. What are the two important elements that uh, in the group one, sodium and potassium, sodium and potassium, sodium and potassium. Sodium first, lithium you can make batteries with that, sodium salt of course, and potassium to make fireworks. And we can get the potassium element, element that's important for the body from banana and potatoes and some leafy vegetables. Okay girls? So this is the main important uh, elements in the group one. The metals in periodic table group two. Group two different from group one. Why they react with other elements by losing two electrons, two, two electrons, called what? Alkaline earth metals, called what? Alkaline earth metals, called what? Alkaline earth metals. And in group two, I will disconnect now. I will connect after five minutes. Okay, wait for me. I will connect after five minutes.